Now, if ever there's a politician who has made good of their threats in this country, it has to be Mr. Raila Odinga. He threatened that he would swear himself in, and he did so. He threatened weekly maandamano. He has done so. And now he has come out to say that on Tuesday, we are going to go back to the chaos that has become the norm in this country. And like I've said before, on the other side, we've seen a lot of talk and no action. IG Koome came out and spoke very harshly against this protesting and maandamano. That did not change anything. We saw the deputy president on several times coming out to speak harshly against this protesting. That also did not yield any dividends. And finally, we have gotten to hear a very stern rebuttal from the president of this republic in regards to the maandamano and the protesting. Here's the tip. Ati sasa, wanataka kupeleka uh, Fujo CBD. Mimi nataka ni wambie jameni. You are, you are tempting the untemptable. Please, wateni yo mchezo. Wateni yo mchezo. Siju kama mnaelewana? Tuko pamoja? Mambo hii, muna tuambia mambo ya sapa ni mambo ya ujinga. Mambo ya sapa, wananchi walimalizana. Wacheni kutubeba ufala. Ah, watu wache mchezo. Na wache madharao. Unajua sasa zingine wananipima, wananiangalia ati, oh, siju yu, hata baba yaka ajulikani. Mutajua hamujui. Now, there's a number of people who have been complaining that this government seems to be very reluctant and unable to deal with Raila Odinga. Kimani Ishungwa has come out to say it. I have been saying it. And also MP Silvanas Osoro, who was with President William Ruto, I believe, in Bomet. He told the president while he was there that it's high time he put his foot down and dealt with Raila Odinga once and for all. Here's the tip. Ulitupatia jukumu tukatengeneza team ya kuenda kutengeneza maneno ya bipartisan kule bungeni. Yule mzee amesimama amepinga tena. Umejaribu kila kitu lakini jamaa bada amesema jumaina hako kwa maandamano. Kenya wanataka kujua jumaine ni nani commander in chief of the Republic of Kenya Kenya hii. Kwa sababu wewe ndi walipatia jukumu ya amani. Jumaine hatutaki kuona maandamano. Yule mzee akitokea hata yeye hayuko juu ya sheria. Akamatu afungwe wakiandamana waandamane mahali wataandamana na kwenda huko. Wananchi wamechoka na mzee kila siku anasumbua. Mara anasema anataka hii. Bei ya chakula ikipungua anageuka anataka sava. Sava akiambua enda uangalie website anageuka na complain tena. Sisi tumechoka hata kwa serikali yo excellency kama Nyanza umewapatia kazi mingi sana. Umepatia ugo la CDF hata wakati ya likuwa raa kugeuza u maneno kule bombers. Umepatia CAS watatu. Umepatia PS kutoka kule nyanza. Lakini bado mzee anasema jumaine anaenda maandamano. Your Excellency, wewe ndiyo commander in chief of the Republic of Kenya. Tokea na mzee asijaribu kutokea jumaine. Iyo, iyo yake ya mwisho asijaribu kukuja. Mmekubali na mnaio? Mmekubali mzee hende? Now in this video I want us to look at why Tuesday the 2nd of May is going to become the determining factor of Ruto's first term in office. Whatever happens on Tuesday is going to be the status quo up until 2027 when we go to the ballot. So it's very consequential but before we get into that if you're here for the first time please go on and hit the subscribe button and if you're watching from a different platform just head on over to YouTube search for David Wafula hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, the first reason why I say this is uh, consequential for the president's first term is that if on Tuesday, after giving such a fiery speech in Bomet, the maandamano still happens, the looting still happens, the mugging and the thugging still happens, that is going to send a clear signal to the opposition that we are having a president who is alto not necessarily a president, but a government which is all talk and no action. Because we've had a lot of rhetoric from uh, DP Rigadi, IG Koome, Kindiki, and now President William Ruto. It's a classic case of the bully. Whether you are new in a high school or in any institution, even in prison, you're going to be tried and tested on day one. How you respond sets the tone for the remainder of your time in that institution or organization. If a bully steps up to you demanding your lunch money and you hand over the lunch money, you can rest assured 
for as long as you're in that institution, you're going to be handing over your lunch money until either you or the bully leaves that institution. But on day one, if a bully asks you for your lunch money and you sucker punch that bully square in the face, that is the end of that discussion. The bully will know not to try that on you ever again. There'll be other victims, but not you. Now, if this government agrees to be a victim, because that is where you feel we are headed, Mandamano 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is like a sequel of a movie. We are now headed to six or seven. If that is the tone they want to set in their first year, this is going to be the norm for the next five years. Anything the opposition does not like, it will be mandamano. High cost of living, mandamano. Whatever other thing that comes up ahead, mandamano. Constitutional reform, mandamano. That is the language that they are going to be using because they understand that it's the only weapon they have against the government and it's working to devastating effect. And the other reason why this is consequential for the government and the president to be specific is because of investors. Investors genuinely do not care how the government will finish this issue of protests. Be it Nusumkate, they don't care. Be it a handshake, be it arresting Raila, they honestly just want that thing gone and gone. Investors care about a business environment. How you achieve there is not their business. But for as long as you can give them that environment, then they can conduct business and they can aid the country in dealing with some of the financial disparity that it currently has. And if investors know that this is an unreliable country that on Monday, being the day that sets the tone for the week, can be a protest day anytime. Tuesday, people can protest anytime. You won't move product, you won't sell your services, you won't visit government offices because every so often the government is paralyzed. These are things that people are looking at. There are three groups which are seriously invested in this. The first group is the electorate. If they can't trust this government to deal with these small problems, they won't vote it in in 2027. The second group is the investors. The investors want to know that we can put our money in this country and it will grow. It won't be vandalized and looted and frustrated from even expanding. And the third group is the opposition. They are testing the government the way small children do. Small children test their parents like that. You'll tell them not to do something, they'll do it anyway, just to see what you can do about it. If you can't do anything about it, that will become a behavior that will cultivate in them and they will proceed with it for eons. But if there is pushback, if they are caned kidogo, they will know that this is not the way to go because it's not so sweet. So the opposition is testing the government. They're also there on the sidelines wanting to see what is this government going to do. So on Tuesday, we expect the government to put its foot down. If they fail, they've honestly just failed. And that is the norm for the next five years. But as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Let's wait for Tuesday to see how things uh, progress in this country. I'll be with you for commentary during that time. Now, as usual, guys, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.